uh, to Mason Rudolph, yes. right? 31 to 17, the Bills end up winning this game. It felt a lot more distant than that at times, and then a lot closer than that at times. A big roller coaster of a game. The beginning, I feel like the Steelers were out of it immediately, and then the Bills let them hang around. Josh Allen, 203 yards through the air, the three touchdowns. He also had 74 rushing yards, highlighted by one of the better quarterback touchdown runs we've seen in quite some time, guys. Josh Allen basically got to do whatever he wanted against the Steelers defense. Man. This was a Superman game. This was yep. like, you know, this is one of those like, hey, Josh, put your cape on and lead us to victory. And that's exactly what he did. He just, he did everything. He passed magnificently. Obviously, you talk about the running. They had no Gabe Davis in this game. It didn't matter. You couldn't even tell. Honestly, that Might dime to Kincaid <laughs> was just absolutely ridiculous as well. Stayed in the pocket. Um, just absolutely played well this this Shakir touchdown you know he's getting some help there just a ridiculous play by heel Shakir but still the fact of the matter is is that they didn't have TJ Watt so they weren't able to get to Allen as well but they still did get some pressure on him but he, he still he stood in the pocket and here's the touchdown run which is just I mean this is ridiculous they thought he was gonna slide and just <laughs> just keeps going he just outruns these guys like I would not want to be a Steeler watching the tape today having to see uh having to see this run this is just an unbelievable play by FantasyLife.com investor Josh Allen. It was Kenny Pickett who like yes. got that play banned in college, right? So yep. some great irony as he watches uh, his success of Mason Rudolph get carved <laughs> up on the other side. But no, Allen was magnificent. I think personally we have the two best quarterbacks in the NFL going head to head next week. Uh, with Allen against Mahomes, you can throw Lamar into that conversation, Joe Burrow, but I think those are the two guys. The only thing is, and the thing out of this game, which I think is a concern, is Buffalo lost like half their defense which is kind of a problem yeah. going up against Patrick Mahomes. Like, all of these guys went down between Bernard, Teron Johnson, who's, uh, you know, one of the yeah. best slot cornerbacks in the league. Uh, they have other guys in the back end going down. Now, the offense is just about fully healthy outside of Gabe Davis, but that is a concern going up against Mahomes, particularly because Mahomes, and his numbers weren't great against Miami. That was the best, I think, their offense has looked in a very long time. It, it really is. On the other hand, the game is going to be in Buffalo. Yeah. Mahomes has never played a playoff game on the road, so that'll be interesting. Buffalo is not an easy place to play, yeah. especially if the weather is anything like it was. And I know they they you know they played well last week at home in cold weather. The Chiefs did uh, as well. But this will be a really interesting one. It'll be an unbelievable game between uh, the Chiefs and the Bills. Can't wait to see that one as well. We honestly have a bunch of great quarterback matchups. When you think about the entire yeah. divisional uh, round, and we're, we're going to break this down later in the week on, on Thursday, but you think about, you know, uh, Brock Purdy against Jordan Love, yeah. two quarterbacks that have exceeded expectations. They're both playing awesome, right? C.J. Stroud and Lamar Jackson. Yeah, I mean, incredible. like, you know, like yeah. that'll be <laughs> awesome. Mahomes and Allen. And then our game, the NBC game, is the great redemption game. It yeah. is Baker Mayfield and Jared Goff, who two former number one picks, right. who kind of, you know, had, have had a roller coaster uh, careers, but this year both locked in, both playing really well, both led their teams to this game. So unbelievable storylines and some great quarterback play for this weekend. On the other end of this game, of course, for the Steelers, I mean, they were 10-point underdogs going into this game. Mason Rudolph throws the brutal interception in the red zone. He still goes 22-39 for 229 yards and two touchdowns. Pat Fryermuth has a good game. Pickens with the brutal, brutal fumble in the first half. But much like the Eagles, a lot of the story and focus right now is on the head coach. And Mike Tomlin was asked about having one year on his contract after the game. Take a look at his response to the question. Anyone? Mike, you have a year left on your contract. It's amazing, by the way. It, yeah. So for those of you that aren't watching, that only heard the audio, basically what happened is the reporter said, Mike, you have a year left on your contract, and he immediately just walks out. Yeah. Immediately. <laughs> immediately. He heard contract. and It's like, yeah, well, because, by the way, I, I, don't, I don't know what preceded that, but my guess is something like Tomlin, like, listen, part of my job is to address the media. You want to talk, about, you want to talk football? You want to talk about this loss? Exactly. I'm happy to talk about this loss. But the first question is, like, about my job status? when I've never missed the playoff, when I've never had a losing season as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers? No. Like, stop it. Like, I'll just say this, and I think a lot of organizations that have openings would feel this way. If Mike Tomlin is suddenly available, I'm really interested. Yeah. I Open arms of the commanders, Mike Tomlin. Right. Come on down. Would love to have you as head coach of the commanders. I think a lot of teams would feel that way as well. By the way, if he ever decides he wants to be into broadcasting, he'll be an amazing commentator. Yes. He would be great on TV. Like, Mike Tomlin's a winner. I'm yep. sorry. 
Yeah, and also, like, we rightfully make a big deal of what Kevin Stefanski did with Cleveland, and he did an amazing job, and they had more injuries outside of the quarterback position, but Mike Tomlin had three quarterbacks as well, and he didn't have the number one defense. That team somehow went 10-7, and seven, despite being outgained in the first nine games of the season, which they went 6-3 and three in. Like, that was a pretty amazing coaching job, I think. By the way, and Stefanski at least had... Stefanski has more talent on the team. He had yeah. more losses, but he also had more talent on the team. And by the way, he at least had Deshaun Watson. Yes. Like, he had a guy that's been a top-five quarterback. Like, the best that Tomlin had was Kenny Pickett, yeah. who, you know, was a healthy scratch in this game, right? right. I mean, like, and ultimately had to go down the stretch with Mason Rudolph and some Mitch Trubisky in there. Like, Tomlin had – and T.J. Watt was in and out of the lineup throughout the year, right? I mean, like, yeah. they – Mika Fitzpatrick, they, yep. they had, they, yeah. he missed a bunch of time as well. And so, uh, you know – Tomlin always does a great job. By the way, the Steelers play in the toughest division in football. Yeah. They went 10-7 and seven playing in that. That's the toughest division in football, yep. the AFC North. Same with Stefanski. He's in the same division, obviously. But um, I, I thought I thought the Steelers it, – it was like to your point, it was a weird game, but like I thought the Steelers actually played tough. I get it. You know what I mean? Like the score doesn't totally reflect that, and they got blown out of the first half. But again – the Mason Rudolph, you know, interception in the in the, in the red zone, absolutely brutal. The Pickens uh, inter- uh, fumble was brutal. Fryermuth puts it on the ground as well. They end up keeping possession, but still, um, the fact of the matter is, is that, um, the, you know, the Steelers, after, by all accounts, it's freezing cold, you're on the road, you're, you're getting your ass kicked in the first half. They easily could have come out and lay down, and they didn't. They played tough. They held Josh Allen. You know, up until like the end of the fourth quarter, the Shakir play, but like they, they got back into it. They clawed back into it with Mason Rudolph. Right. They needed a stop at the end of the game, and they couldn't get it. And it goes back to your point of injuries. No T.J. Watt. Joey Porter Jr. has been their best corner this year, a rookie, yeah. and yeah. he got hurt in this game. They've had no other corners besides him. They are literally going to have to draft or sign two corners. So they were man down. And Miles Jack. I mean, this is harsh, but there's a reason he left football to go be an electrician, and you see him come back. Like, I know it's harsh, but, like, he had a tough night. He had a tough night. He had a, they he were had, thin on defense. They, they were had, they were thin on defense. But it, it appears – I was listening to the broadcast. It appears they found something in this Jalen Warren kid. I was not aware of this, <laughs> but uh, apparently Jalen Warren they've – they've now got a one-two punch. This, this yeah. brand That's, new – Who could have seen this coming? Who could have seen Jalen Warren coming? Who knew? <laughs> oh, man. I assumed it was just Najee the whole time. Yeah, uh, yeah. All season who knew? Long. But, all right, uh, I mean, we were all surprised. Like, who is this Jalen Warren? I started looking him up. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wow, that's yeah. excellent. That's yeah, very uh, that's a tough scene. That, that, was, uh, that, was a, that was a tough scene. Did you know, I, I looked this up because I was shocked by that particular comment. And uh, Jalen Warren had basically 500 less total yards on the season than Najee Harris. Yeah. Like, I didn't look up the snaps, but I bet you the snaps are about even. Like, it's if you've watched literally, like, 20 seconds of any Steelers He's a thing game. for it's the like entire a, year. For the entire year. <laughs> like, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself in trouble. I just, that was a, that was, yeah, that was, that was something. Hey, um, back to the other thing. I would just want to say, we sort of skipped over this, but just on the Bills, back to the Bills for one second. I do want to say that, like, he's still not 100% right, but back-to-back games now with seven receptions for Stefan Diggs, who was so quiet down the stretch. Like, it was good to at least see him. Again, he's, we still haven't had the big play, the big Stefan Diggs play, but at least, like, possession-wise, active. moving the chains, active. Like, that's been good to see the last two games for the Bills offense, for Stefan Diggs, and for somebody who has him in Dynasty. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.